I'm Casper. I'm Kylie. And I'm Ella. In this video, we're going to show you how to do Paris in four days. Welcome, Welcome to, to Paris! Paris. We're currently at the Louvre, uh, just about to go in, so we're just lining up to get scanned at the moment. I'm so excited! So the now famous glass pyramid here at Louvre was completed in 1988 and uh, it was part of the uh, Grand Louvre expansion project. And it now serves as the main entrance to the museum. I realized that the Mona Lisa was on a poster. I thought it was a painting. <laughs> Louvre is the world's most visited museum. It opened in 1793. About 35,000 works of art are on display at any one time, but the museum houses 10 times as many artefacts. Besides her smile, the Mona Lisa painting became famous after it was stolen in 1911 for over two years by an Italian who wanted to return the painting to an Italian museum. So you can see behind me the famous painting by Leonardo DiCaprio. Who would have thought he was such an amazing artist? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Leno da Vinci, uh, the Mona Lisa. Chardin de Tuileries, which is located between Louvre and Place de la Concorde, is probably the most famous garden in Paris and a nice place to go for a walk, have a picnic or hang out and relax on a sunny day. Bon appétit. Okay. <laughs> oh, that looks messy. Mm -hmm. Really messy, but delicious. So in the background you can see the Luxor Obelisk. It was uh, donated by Egypt back in 1829 to France as a diplomatic gift. So it's right in the middle of Place de la Concorde, which is the largest square here in Paris. The first section of Champs Elysees near Place de la Concorde is lined with parks including the Grand Palais on the south side and the Elysee Palace on the north side, which houses the French president. Yeah. 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 On me. Yeah, no escaping from my mind, but low key. 
You know that you one of a kind wanna show me Baby The things you feel do with that body yo Show up everywhere that I be yo so we are currently walking along the Saint Julesse, which is probably one of the world's most famous avenues. So it's known for its uh, high-end shops, uh, restaurants, and cafes, and it stretches all the way from Place de la Concorde up to Arc de Triomphe. It's also known for being the finishing line of the uh, annual Tour de France cycling race. Here you can see Arc de Triomphe, so it's at the end of Jean Chelyse, but it actually has 12 adjoining avenues that uh, leads into this roundabout. It's 50 meters tall and it was uh, commissioned by Napoleon and completed in 1836. It was built in honor of all those people that fell during the French Revolution and the Napoleon Wars. There's a really nice view from up the top of the uh, Arc de Triomphe. So you can see the Eiffel Tower here in the background. And if we pan around, you can see Montmartre and Sacre Coeur here in the back. So we hadn't actually booked any tickets to get up here in advance, but uh, there was only a line up for like five minutes or so. So it was really quick and easy to get up here. So in this case, no need to book tickets in advance. The Palace of Versailles is a former royal residence located west of Paris. The grounds were used by Louis XIII as a hunting pavilion, but it was expanded by his son Louis XIV to include the French court and government from 1682. Subsequent kings continued to expand and embellish the palace up until the French Revolution in 1789 to include 2,300 rooms spread over 63,000 metres square. The palace includes famous rooms such as the Gallery of Great Battles, the War and Peace Rooms, and the Hall of Mirrors. The palace became a museum in 1837 and has been listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1979. Okay, so we've just finished in the Palace of Versailles. Wow, I have never seen anything like this in my life. It was literally amazing. Just the fabrics, the marbling, the furniture, the chandeliers, it was literally out of this world. It was so awesome. Uh, the only thing I would say is the crowds were super annoying. Um, it was so busy and so packed. And in some of the small corridors that got into the individual rooms, uh, it was absolutely packed like sardines. It was crazy. And then you had people kind of ushering you along. So you didn't really get to stand and enjoy it. Um, so yeah, that was definitely a bit of an issue. But then you enter into these beautiful big ballrooms and then you could really just spend a bit of time and enjoy it and really take it all in. But I would definitely recommend coming here. It was really absolutely amazing.
The Palace of Versailles Gardens are very manicured, full of fountains and ornaments, and with hedges and trees forming a maze of walking paths. Visitors can hire a boat and row on the Grand Canal, which is a 60 meter wide and 1.6 kilometer long waterway. So just quick word of advice, definitely make sure that you get to the Palace of Versailles early. So we were here at 10. Um, and also make sure that you buy your tickets online as well. So it'll save you a lot of waiting time. Uh, but as you can see, the line behind me is pretty crazy. So yeah, definitely book online. After the Palace of Versailles, we stopped for a delicious lunch at a cafe serving waffles with all kinds of toppings. After our late lunch, we went up to Montmartre. Sacre Coeur, which means Sacred Heart, is a basilica that's located on top of the Montmartre Hill. It was completed in 1914 and it's the second most visited church here in Paris, next after Notre Dame. It's made from limestone, which naturally bleaches itself, so that's where the white looks come from. It also has one of the largest and heaviest church bells in the world, weighing about 19 tons. Place du Tetra, although busy, has a charming village-like feel. You will find lots of artists selling their canvases and offering portrait sessions. It's a great place for people watching. If you do decide to wine and dine in Montmartre, be prepared for some hefty prices. We're up at Montmartre at the moment at Place du Tetra. It's such a gorgeous place. So many artists, cafes, restaurants. There's so Hi. much happening. Hi. How are you today? Good. <laughs> Enjoy. Like and subscribe, right? Oh, <laughs> yeah? Like it and subscribe. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, it's full of some interesting characters up here. I love it. It's great. Uh, I could hang out here all day. Momata also has a small vineyard that produces about 500 litres of wine each year. Momata is full of lovely narrow streets to walk around as well as places to sit and enjoy the view. You will also find lots of buskers playing all sorts of music.
on the outskirts of Montmartre, you will find the iconic cabaret show Moulin Rouge. So I'm standing in front of the Moulin Rouge. I've always wanted to go. I saw that every night, both shows. So clearly it's an amazing show. So one thing you definitely need to do is make sure that you book online well in advance if you want to go to the show. Apparently they use about 240,000 bottles of champagne every year. So clearly they keep the bubbles flowing. Thanks guys for watching part one of our Paris video. Up next on part two, we're going to take you to the Eiffel Tower, cruise along the Seine River and lead you through the spooky catacombs. See you next time on Living the Joe Life.